so to starting with about bipolar affective disorder we will going to cover four competencies in this lecture one is magnitude and etiology regarding bipolar uh, treatment of bipolar disorder including pharmacological management and behavioral management pharmacologic basis of side effects of drug used for treatment of bipolar disorder and the condition in which the patient can be referred to the specialist so in the definition the mood disorder encompasses the large group of psychiatric disorder in which pathological mood is the core feature either it is elevated mood or depressed mood along with the other psychopathologies like uh, uh, psychomotor disturbances and impaired vegetative state like uh, impairment in sleep and uh, impaired appetite so previous uh, edition of dsm4 defined it as affective disorders so because the affect is the immediate expression of emotions so this is reconsidered as mood disorders because mood is more uh, sustained emotional state so it is considered as a disorder rather than the illness or a discrete disease because of the cluster of signs and symptoms which we found in the depressive states or manic states so previously there is a, there are there were various schools of thought and uh, some schools of thought like uh, obrelis followed the continuum model of uh, bipolar disorder which ranges from Uh, anxiety to the severe depression or having uh, episodes of mania but the another school sharply demarcated anxiety and mood disorder and other disorders uh, this is not the continuum order for them in classifications like dsm 5 and icd 10 it is uh, subdivided on the basis of polarity and which is known as <coughs> unipolar and bipolar disorder the unipolar disorder there are depressive episodes only on the uh, due course of illness and in bipolar disorder there may be depressive episodes along with the episodes of uh, mania and hypomania at least one episode of episode of uh, mania or hypomania should be there to say this is a bipolar disorder so regarding the concept of bipolar disorder bipolar disorder have uh, two episodes one is of the spectrum of depression and another is spectrum of mania in depression one can uh, have depressed mood loss of interest reduced energy these three are the four features of depression along with that a person can have reduced concentration and attention reduced self esteem or self confidence ideas of guilt and unworthiness bleak and pessimistic views of the future that is uh, hopelessness ideas and act of self harm or suicide disturb sleep or diminish appetite on contrary to the depression one can have uh, mood uh, elevated mood in manic episodes increase energy whereas reduced energy is there in the depression over activity psychomotor activity is increased pressure of speech speech is we pressured and uh, the speed is very high decrease need for sleep uh, decrease sleep is there but the person feel like there is uh, uh, no need for such a long sleep or a adequate time of sleep as if 2 uh, 3 hours are adequate for him normal social inhibitions are lost there is lack of uh, social inhibitions attention cannot be sustained there is there will be marked distractibility self esteem is inflated and will have grandiose ideas or over optimistic attitude so these are the two different spectrum of uh, bipolar disorder in the due course of time one can have uh, at least uh, the spectrum of mania and with along with the episodes of depression so if uh, it is graphically represented this <clears throat> the depression can be represented as the uh, crest and mania as a hypomania is uh, somewhat subtle form of uh, mania it is not so severe and it has different criteria to be diagnosed and one can have mixed episodes also 
uh, in this uh, episode the person will have both the features of mania and depression uh, at the same time in this picture you can see the orange line which represents bipolar 1 disorder this is type 1 disorder in which at least one uh, episode of full blown mania should be present and uh, in contrary to uh, bipolar 1 in bipolar 2 which is represented with yellow line there is one episode of hypomania and uh, uh, maybe alternating with the depressive episode but there should not be episode of full blown mania cyclothymia is somewhat subtle form of uh, bipolar disorder in which uh, none of the episode uh qualifies the criteria for either for the mania or major depression so coming to the competencies we are going to cover the first one is magnitude and etiology of bipolar disorder in indian context we have various studies we will discuss a few studies regarding the magnitude or uh, prevalence of bipolar disorder the study this study was done in 2017 and according to this study 7.6 million people are suffering from bipolar disorder in india and uh, prevalence varied 1.3 times across the states in which is the prevalence is somewhat high like goa kerala sikkim himachal pradesh <coughs> in another study which was uh, conducted on uh, around uh, 35000 adults the weighted prevalence of bipolar disorder was 0.3 for the current episode and 0.5% for the lifetime diagnosis lifetime lifetime diagnosis is one can have a, a bipolar disorder uh, in his or her lifetime is 0.5% male gender and the resident of urban metropolitans uh, ha had a significantly higher risk for lifetime diagnosis of bipolar disorder cross sectional comorbidities were also common like uh, tobacco use other substance use in uh, around 14% and anxiety disorder in 10% disability due to bipolar disorder also noticed in this study uh, which is at work is 63% and uh, social disabilities are, uh, are also around 60% and uh, disturbance in family life is around 63% the treatment gap for current bipolar disorder was 70.4% which means 74 or 70% people were not uh, not getting the treatment of any kind in this study done in 2022 published in 2022 the mean age of onset of bipolar disorder was 26 years and 11 to 13% of uh, illness was spent in acute episodes mostly in depression in their uh, due course of uh, illness first episode was more likely to be manic episode and manic episodes sorts outnumbered depressive episodes in this population the average duration of episodes was 3 months the duration of depressive episodes found to be longer than the uh, manic episodes psychotic symptoms were found in 48% patients recurrent mania in 19% and the rapid cycling and seasonal pattern were uncommon rapid cycling means having more than four episodes of either within the last one year and seasonal pattern is the <coughs> person is having episodes of either uh, mania or depression in a particular season like winter or in the spring stressful life events were very common prior to the episodes and this is particular for the first episode the triggering factor for the first episode uh, is found 80% to be uh, as a as a uh, uh, stressful life events so what around the world the data says is according to the who world mental health survey the lifetime prevalence of bipolar disorder uh, in the world is around 1% and the national epidemiologic survey on alcohol and related conditions were conducted and reported lifetime prevalence of uh, bipolar 1 disorder to be 3.3% and for bipolar 2 is 1.1% there are other correlates also uh, to to be considered along with the magnitude like gender for all the all subtypes of uh, bipolar disorder combined the ratio is 1 is to 1 for male and female gender females are overrepresented among bipolar disorder bipolar disorder is more found in the females 
depressive component also found more in the females and in case of unipolar mania men are markedly overrepresented having a high prevalence rate <clears throat> lifetime prevalence and one year prevalence of major depression dysthymia or either of bipolar 1 or 2 uh, disorder are much higher among the people with same sex uh, or uh, including the bisexuality particularly in the case of bisexuality in males the age uh, correlates are uh, the mean age of onset of uh, bipolar disorder is 20 years of age and it is about 10 years lower than the unipolar depression and bipolar men appear to have 4 to 5 years earlier onset than the females in case of bipolar disorder and more than half of the cases onset is before the age of 20 years and uh, first onset mania is very rare among elderly people it is not so common uh, depressive episodes are more common in elderly population higher age of onset in bipolar dis disorder too are uh, uh, seen in in this population the incidence of depressive phase of bipolar disorder after childbirth is relatively high and uh, this is the case of postpartum depression and uh, usually these females are uh, already diagnosed with the uh, disorder of bipolar those who are having family history positive for bipolar disorder their uh, age of onset usually uh, lower than that the general population and they need less stressor to be triggered uh, uh, to have uh, to to trigger the uh, illness in race and ethnicity and obviously the cultural differences influences the psychopathology of the psychiatric disorder and it influences the presentation of depression and mania leading to uh, unreliable figures in prevalence studies however the rates of mood disorder are lower in the blacks and Hispanic than the whites <clears throat> Regarding the marital status, the person being single, divorced or separated can be at either risk factor or is the result of the adverse life event due to the illness. It, it is the two way around, this is bi-directional. One is not uh, having the good social support, may uh, develop early the onset of this disorder or because of this disorder, the person's life will be uh, hampered and may lead to the divorce or separation. <clears throat> so family breakdown is elevated markedly in the bipolar 1 disorder than the, and in the bipolar 2 disorders and it's a strong predictor for future separation or divorce when which can also hamper the life of their children also. So early negative life events are well known predisposing factor for the adult mood disorders. One the person who was having the adverse life events in the childhood is more likely to develop the bipolar disorder if the person is having propensity to develop it. In socioeconomic status, it's a weak uh, finding correlation between the bipolar uh, 1 disorder and lower socioeconomic status. The individual with lower socioeconomic status have lower level of education, lower income, poor living condition and other uh, difficulties which may lead to the adverse life event and which may trigger the uh, disorder and contrary to it the same may result in regression on the social hierarchy scale when a person develops the mood disorder again this is a two way around for hypomania it is not not so disruptive as mania so the academic and social career or other aspects of bipolar disorder patient is above the average than the bipolar 1 disorder. There are seasonal variations also. Uh, it has been observed that uh, in spring and fall uh, are the peak times for the depression and uh, summer is for the mania and uh, it may be due to the, <coughs> the annual rhythm of the specific seasonal uh, subtypes. However, acute and long term pharmacotherapy may uh, alter the pattern of the seasoning of the development of these episodes. So be careful while evaluating the person uh, or labeling the person with the seasonal affective disorder while the patient is on the treatment. Geographical trend, it has been seen that uh, the per persons who are uh, located closer to the equator are having high rates of uh, developing manic symptoms 
and in uh, north america in the latitude in north america the winter depression are high and summer depression across the latitude shows the opposite tendency of latitude of north america this relation is quite weak relation but uh, the observations are there <clears throat> in the social stresses as we have already discussed are well recognized as a risk factor uh, stressor can be the childhood stressor or adulthood events or maybe acute stressors or chronic stressors uh, positive or negative life events can play a role in uh, development of these disorders so again as we have discussed it is progressively weaker the social stressor may have role in the subsequent episodes of bipolar disorder in as a triggering factor social support can improve the coping and uh, can modify the occurrence of psychosocial stress or adverse consequence of them so social support is a good uh, prognostic indicator for the bipolar disorder living alone low socio economic status being unemployed are the risk factors for the mood disorders <clears throat> comorbidity the patients with bipolar disorder can have uh, higher number of comorbid excess uh, than general population the most frequent disorders are alcohol abuse or dependence panic disorders one can have obsessive compulsive disorder social anxiety anxiety disorder as a comorbidity they can have so now in the same competency we will move to the etiology of the bipolar disorder the etiology of bipolar disorder is multifactorial Uh, it has a biological component also it has a psychological component also it has a social component also or other biological components like genetics uh, and uh, the influence of immune reaction inflammatory reactions or other uh, oxidative stress and regard and the nutrition and the all are uh, contributory to the mood disorder or have some kind or another kind of association with the bipolar disorder patients so we will look at the neurobiology of depression and uh, first we will discuss regarding the biogenic amines we are which are implicated in the uh, mood disorder first we will discuss regarding norepinephrine norepinephrine is down uh, it, it is uh, down regulated or sensitivity is decreased in case of bipolar disorder the presynaptic beta 2 receptor activation results in decrease of amount of norepinephrine release so beta 2 receptor are presynaptic receptor which uh, helps in the release of the norepinephrine and uh, the decrease sensitivity of beta 2 may lead to decrease amount of uh, secretion of norepinephrine which is also evident by the antidepressant drugs which are used for uh, uh, bipolar depression to treat and have a good result uh, the drug which increase the norepinephrine level so one can reversely think of norepinephrine is involved in the biological uh, impairment of the bipolar disorder the second is serotonin which is again a biogenic amine and uh, it is evident by ssris drugs like uh, floxstein and sertraline known as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors so these drugs uh, inhibit the reuptake of the serotonin in the synapse so the more availability of serotonin is there so uh, by this means we can conclude that the serotonin has a strong positive role in the psycho in the development of uh, depressive disorders as a bipolar disorder csf concentration of serotonin is also found low in cases of who had suicidal impulses in the uh, depressive phase the another one is dopamine dopamine activity may be reduced in depression or and it can increased in mania it has been observed uh, the drugs and disease that reduce the dopamine concentration are associated with comorbid depressive symptoms like parkinson's disease or the drug uh, uh, like uh, which reduce the level of dopamine like uh, anti parkinson's drug can also uh, the anticholinergic drug can also Uh, lead to depressive symptoms so again in the reverse manner we can uh, conclude that dopamine has a role in the development of uh, either mania or depression 
so drug that increase dopamine concentrations like uh, tyrosine amphetamine and bupropion reduce the symptoms of depression and uh, out of these one is uh, bupropion which is also antidepressant is uh, commonly being used for the treatment of depressive disorders other neurotransmitters which are involved is uh, acetylcholine and which have been found in uh, abnormal levels are found in autopsy the agonist can produce lethargy energia and uh, psychomotor retardation in healthy subjects and can this can exacerbate symptoms of depression or this can reduce the symptoms of mania so there are not uh, sufficient or robust uh, data available to say that acetylcholine is uh, Uh, implicated in the development of bipolar disorder in other neurotransmitter one is uh, uh, gaba gaba amino butyric acid uh, which is found in uh, csf level in reduced amount in case of depression and animal studies also found that chronic stress can reduce eventually can deplete the gaba levels so gaba level has a weak antidepressant effect it uh, can reduce the symptoms like anxiety and uh, sleep and uh, other symptoms but it is not uh, uh, good for core features of the depression so it has somewhat uh, less role in development of bipolar depression nmda receptors are exist in hippocampus and uh, glutamate may work in conjunction with hypercortisolemia to mediate the deleterious neurocognitive effect of severe recurrent depression so nmda is excitatory a uh, neurotransmitter and uh, the dysfunction of this can lead to neurocognitive decline besides these neurotransmitter other aspect is hormonal regulation which is implicated in the biological uh, aspect of bipolar disorder the elevated hpa activity hypothalamus pituitary axis activity is the hallmark of stress we all know that it uh, lead to hypercortisolemia and it is also found in depressive state that cortisol level are high in the patients with uh, with the depression regarding the thyroid status it has been seen that in the patient of depression who were not uh, uh, diagnosed as a patient of thyroid dysfunction previously but their uh, level of thyroid stimulating hormone are elevated and uh, there is increased tsh response to infusion of the thyroid releasing hormone so this abnormality is observed in the patients of depression and in 20 to 30 depressed patient shows the blunted tsh response to trh challenge also like uh, challenge to hpa axis so an increase risk for relapse is uh, observed despite preventive antidepressant therapy when the blunted tsh responses there in the patients growth hormone is secreted by anterior pituitary and after stimulation by norepinephrine and dopamine it is inhibited by somatostatin and the decrease cf csf somatostatin levels have been reported in depression and increased level in manic patients prolactin is released by the pituitary by serotonin stimulation or is inhibited by the dopamine and a blunted prolactin response to various serotonin agonist uh, has been described but uh, it is uh, it, it does not have a very strong uh, correlation with the biological aspect of bipolar disorder immunological responses are also observed uh, which is uh, decreased lymphocyte uh, uh, proliferation in uh, response to the mitogens in case of depressive disorder and other forms of impaired cellular immunity there uh, appear to be an association with clinical severity uh, with hypercortisolism and immune dysfunction in site and the cytokine interleukin 1 so association is there but uh, no strong positive uh, relations are there between these immunological disturbances structural and functional brain imaging shows that shows that hyper intensities in bipolar disorder and among elderly adults appear to reflect the deleterious neurodegenerative effect in the recurrent episode 
when there is there are recurrent episodes of uh, bipolar uh, disorders on the long term it has been observed that this has a uh, neurodegenerative effects ventricular enlargement is seen cortical atrophy is seen sulcal widening have also been reported in some studies diffuse and focal area of atrophy also been observed and reversal of hypofrontal frontality occurs after shift from depression into hypomania is also observed that the reduction of uh, uh, the frontal brain is seen in depression which is reversed in when the patient switches into the mania in the mania left side of brain uh, the frontal region is reduced more than that of the the right region these are the neuroanatomical consideration of uh, brain part and uh, how it is related to the psychopathology and how it, how it how it functions as uh, in the terms of behavior the left sided activation of the region of prefrontal cortex involved in the goal directed and appetitive behavior and regions of right pfc is implicated in avoidance behavior and inhibition of the appetite so this is the reverse of uh, what is seen in the right side and the left side anterior cingulate cortex is uh, thought to serve as the point of integration of attentional and emotional inputs hippocampus is clearly implicated in the formation of the memory so further in genetic factors if one parent has a mood disorder the child will have chance to develop uh, have a risk of 10 to 25% of developing the bipolar disorder and the risk is doubled in when the both parents are affected the more number member of the family who are affected uh, the greater the risk to the child so family loading has a role the more the family loading uh, the more the chances of having bipolar disorder the risk is greater when uh, the first degree relative uh, relative is affected this is also a fact unipolar is most common form of family in the families of bipolar proven <clears throat> the familial overlap suggests some degree of common genetic underpinning between the two forms of uh, mood disorder the presence of more severe illness in the family also conveys a greater risk in adoption studies when they try to separate the genetic and environmental factor whether the environmental factor is causative or the genetic genetic uh, the results they have found were mixed so no conclusion had been uh, established till now in twin studies uh, this has been uh, separated somewhat more and in twin data they have uh, evidence that genes can explain the uh, the etiology of mood disorder up to 50 to 70% and uh, other factor may also be the contributing but it's a uh, uh, strong evidence in the twin studies in the linkage studies some chromosomes are found to be linked to bipolar disorders are chromosome 18 21q and 22q the 18 is uh, transmitted to be uh, it is found to be transmitted to the Uh, mother and uh, the mother is the possible parent of origin of the bipolar disorder if uh, chromosome 18 is involved chromosome 21q is uh, uh, found to have linkage and association to both of the schizophrenia and bipolar disorder so again 22q it's a breakpoint cluster gene is located on uh, the bcr is located on 22q11 and uh, which encodes an activating protein which is known to play important role in neuronal growth and axonal guidance so it is also linked to the development of uh, the brain disorder so after uh, biological factors there are psychosocial factors also the disorder are, are also explained by various various psychologists behaviorists and uh, psychosocial theories so life event and environmental stress can uh, precede the first episode as we have already discussed the theory proposed in the first episode result in the long lasting neuro degeneration or alteration in the brain uh, biology which uh, leads to the first and make the per person uh, more vulnerable to have another episode so excessive reduction in synaptic contact and loss of neuron is established during the first episode so
the personality factor for depression the more personality factor which is associated with the uh, depressive uh, disorder is ocd histrionic personalities and borderline ocd is actually ocpd obsessive compulsive personality disorder and the no evidence of any personality disorder is found to be associated with bipolar 1 disorder psychodynamic factors in depression so psychodynamic factors are uh, Uh, explain the depression mania on the basis of psychodynamic theory the psychodynamic theory was given by the sigmund freud and uh, the four points the four key points of uh, for the association with the depression is first the oral phase of the uh, patient was uh, disturbed during the early phase of life like 10 to 18 months which predisposed the person for subsequent uh, vulnerability to the depression and depression can be linked to real or imagined object loss so real or imagined object loss is the uh, basic of when the why 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 the patient develops the depressive disorder the defense mechanisms like introjection uh, invoked to deal with the and uh, distress uh, connected with the object loss uh, ego defense mechanisms also plays the role so to understand the psychodynamic theory we have another lecture which was taken for a, a physiotherapy student the therapeutic psychoanalysis and so psychodynamics you can see that lecture you can watch that lecture to understand what the psychodynamic theory and what are the ego defense mechanisms and uh, how this explain the person's behavior the fourth one is feeling of anger are directed inward at self this explains the suicidal behavior of the depressed patient the anger of the patient is directed inward to kill themselves is the theory psychodynamic theory behind it for psychodynamic factors in mania it is uh, mostly considered as defense against the underlying depression so various school of thought explained it and uh, the theme remains the same uh, more or less same for the all like uh, uh, abram explained it as a inability to tolerate a developmental tragedy uh, bartram explained it as a, uh, is that as a ego as overridden by pleasurable impulses such as sex or by fear impulses such as aggression so both both the things are found in uh, manic patient Uh, for example hypersexuality is uh, one of the clinical feature and aggression and irritability is also one of the feature clean also viewed mania as a defensive reaction to the depression the another theory is cognitive theory which was given by the aaron beck and uh, she uh, considered three points uh, which uh, out of which one is views about the self a negative self perception about the environment a tendency to experience the world as a hostile and demanding and about the future the expectation of suffering and uh, failure so about the future future is hopelessness worthlessness helplessness for the environment is to see as a nihilistic uh, view of the world the world is going to end nobody helps me the my surrounding is uh, uh, indifferent so this is regarding the environment and negative self to perceptive is like uh, harming to self having uh, ideas of worthlessness having uh, low confidence is the self perceptive so this is regarding the cognitive theory another is learned helplessness the person get learned that uh, nothing can be done so this is the theory of learned helplessness uh, and the loss of self esteem and uh, it is after the adverse external events <clears throat> now coming to the classification uh, we have uh, uh, gone through the etiology and magnitude so how the classification is uh, done for bipolar disorder for particularly for icd 10 the uh, classification is uh, on the basis of the person presented what kind of episode and what is spectrum of the disorder so it is divided into uh, hypomanic bipolar affective disorder current episode hypomanic and subsequently mania without psychotic symptoms mania with psychotic symptoms mild or moderate depression 
severe depression without psychotic symptoms severe depression with psychotic symptoms one can have mixed episode or patient may uh, visit to the clinic in the stage of remission so as the as the patient presented to you in the clinic you can diagnose on the basis of these episodes so now we will cover the next competency behavioral and pharmacologic therapy so management of bipolar disorder is divided into the general guideline of treatment the specific treatment the specific treatment is divided into pharmacologic treatment psychological treatment or behavioral treatment and other modality of treatments which is available so in general guidelines the patient safety is must and should be the first priority second a complete diagnostic evaluation should be done to imply the uh, management plan the immediate symptoms uh, not only to be uh, considered but uh, the prospective well being of the person in the terms of uh, relapse prevention and recurrence prevention prevention uh, should be kept in the mind while treating the current treatment of current episode is not the complete treatment also do consider the stressful life events in the patient's life to be addressed accordingly which may be dealt with the non pharmacological management so maintain uh, dual treatment focus acute short term treatment for the current episode and prophylaxis of the subsequent episode chart the illness retrospectively and prospectively this is very important when the patient comes in the phase of depression one can have idea that the patient is a case of uh, either depression or unipolar depression so past history is also important if the person is having past history of manic episode uh, so treatment plan will, will be changed in the both the conditions so do consider the past history and chart the illness prospectively to manage in the better way in case of uh, emergency like uh, full blown mania treat the patient first uh, consider the chemistries later careful combination treatment can decrease the adverse event so reduction of adverse event is also important while treating the patient augment rather than substitute in treatment resistant phase if the person is not responding do not uh, uh, substitute the main uh, molecule rather augment it retain dpm in regimen for is for its anti suicide and neuroprotective effect lithium as a mood stabilizer is also uh, considerable in uh, case of patient is having suicidal ideations and it is a neuroprotective factor also educate patient and family regarding the illness the course of illness the treatment and the options available give uh, the correct statistics you know. uh, for example 50% relapse and uh, relapse can occur in first 5 months of the uh, lithium do not mislead or do not give uh, wrong information correct information is important Develop an early warning system for identification and treatment of emergent uh, emergent symptoms uh, in uh, subsequent uh, visit. Use regular visit, monitor course, and adverse effect of the treatment. Assess compliance and suicidality regularly. Patient may develop uh, suicidal ideation in any point of time of uh, in the due course of their illness. Target psychotherapy if it is required. if treatment is successful be conservative conservative in making uh, changes maintain the course uh, what is uh, defined and required continue the full dose pharmacoprophylaxis in absence of side effect if the treatment is negative uh, inadequate be aggressive in searching for more effective alternatives okay. so these are the general guidelines one should follow hospitalization is also important part hospitalization may require in some certain circumstances like when there is a risk of suicide or homicide person should be hospitalized to uh, get better the uh, patient can have grossly reduced ability to uh, have a oral intake of food if the person is not uh, having food or uh, patient's health physical health is deteriorating it is also indication for hospitalization the need uh, for diagnostic procedure if diagnosis is questionable it is not uh, uh, it cannot be made on the opd basis the person can be hospitalized to make it 
and uh, a history of rapidly progressing symptoms uh, is also indication the person may develop full blown episodes within the time so person should be hospitalized to better manage the rupture of the patient's usual support system if the social system is uh, not uh, adequate or it's lacking or it's breaking it is also an indicate indication as for the psychopathology for a depression the uh, person has slow thinking and hopelessness so he may not uh, able to take the decision of hospitalization so one can uh, consider for the involuntary hospitalization and in case of the uh, mania the chances of having lack of insight is more so this should also be considered while uh, treating the patient in pharmacologic therapy drug selection is uh, done on the basis of the drug factor the factors of the drug itself the safety of the patient and the factors which are related to the patient in drug selection pharmacodynamics should be considered in the mind the receptor mechanism the mechanism by virtue of which the drug is acting the dose response curve the therapeutic index some uh, drug can have a low therapeutic index like uh, lithium Uh, which can be detrimental to the health of the person or may prove fatal the development of tolerance dependence of withdrawal phenomena due to the drug the clinical response to the drug including adverse reactions should also be considered while treating the patient in pharmacokinetics predict the onset and duration of drug activity at uh, what uh, duration the drug will start to act interaction of uh, drug to drug should also be considered in the mind and the absorption distribution metabolism and ex excretion of the drug should be taken into consideration patient related factor the current response to medication should be considered sensitivity to the side effect if the person is having more uh, is more sensitive to the development of uh, side effect the diagnosis the genetic factors uh, whether the uh, familial loading is more or not lifestyle of the patient should also be considered some drugs are uh, known to cause metabolic syndrome or other syndrome which may uh, detrimental with the lifestyle of the patient overall medical status how the person is doing how healthy he is concurrent disorder comorbid disorder whether it is medical disorder or other psychiatric disorder past history of the drug response whether the patient responded to the drug in the past Uh, what uh, if it is evident that the good response was there the same drug should be started in the current episode also the patient's attitude aversion to the certain type of side effect certain type of side effect may uh, not be liked by the patient so do consider the side effect preference for the specific agent should also be considered patient's family history of the drug res response can also be seen to uh, have an idea which drug can have better response in the patient So regarding the dose duration and monitoring in uh, psychopharmacology for the dosing inherited sensitivity should be seen uh, whether the patient is able to metabolize it or not some patients are slow metabolizer some are fast metabolizers concurrent medical disorders are there or not like uh, hepatic impairment renal impairment cardiac abnormalities uh, concurrent medication treatment which can have interaction with the drug which you are going to prescribe history of exposure to the previous medication should also be considered drug must be used in the these three points are important uh, to say whether the uh, treatment uh, plan is working or not the drug must be used in the effective doses for sufficient period you know, do not uh, stop the treatment uh, before the adequate period of time of which is stipulated sub therapeutic doses and incomplete therapeutic trial may lead to impression that the person is not responding time of dosing is usually based on the plasma half life of the drug and its uh, side effect of profile this is the question which is uh, commonly being asked by the patients that uh, how long do i need to take the medications explain them uh, this is based uh, based on the nature of the disorder the duration of symptoms the family history whether uh, you are able to tolerate it or not the benefit you are getting or not so this is a multifactorial uh, answer answer for this question for a duration of treatment now regarding the <coughs> treatment treatment is uh, 
in the course of time is uh, divided into initial therapeutic trial the continuation phase and in the maintenance phase the treatment outcomes which you can have with this with these these patients are uh, maybe a patient completely remitted and uh, now he is having no psychopathology so complete remission is the goal and uh, elimination of all manifestation of disorder whether it is pharmacological or uh, biopsychosocial should be considered responders are those who respond partially to the drug relapse and recurrence can uh, be part of the outcome of the treatment one can relapse while on the treatment and recur after having uh, full recovery of the episodes the treatment failure can be one of the aspect in pharmacological therapy so the therapist should consider the diagnosis first whether he was uh, diagnosed the patient was diagnosed correctly or not secondly the adverse effect of the drug Uh, may lead to non-compliance or may uh, cause the psychopathologic symptoms like uh, steroid can induce the depressive like symptoms or psychosis like symptoms so third one is whether appropriate dose of drug were used or not whether any kind of interaction between the drugs were there whether the patient is uh, compliant to the treatment or he was non compliant whether he was taking the treatment uh, as prescribed or not other outcomes can be treatment resistance tolerance to the drug sensitization to the drug and uh, withdrawal to the drug to combat with the withdrawal of the drug one can slowly or gradually taper off the drug to stop it so can avoid the withdrawal symptoms now in the mood stabilizers we have uh, two groups one group is uh, which is being used for uh, epilepsy also the strongest evidence uh, for uh, treatment of mania is for valproate and carbamazepine and uh, for depression it is uh, lamotrigine which is uh, very good uh, for uh, elevating the depression from below but it is not very good for sta stabilizing the mood from the above that is manic episode so lamotrigine can be considered in depressive episode if it is, if it is not uh, working other drug which is uh, which also have uh, somewhat partial and uh, good effect is ox carbamazepine which has uh, uh, plus plus effect in the treatment of mania and other drug which are available for epilepsy like topiramate zonisamide gabapentin pregabalin and levetiracetam are not uh, very known to stabilize the mood so their effect are either plus or minus or weak evidence are there to stabilize the mood the another one is lithium you must have heard about it uh, in your pharmacology class the lithium is uh, having narrow margin of safety safety it has a narrow therapeutic uh, index uh, and the level which is required for acute mania is 1 to 1.2 mL equivalent per liter and for maintenance therapy is 0.6 to 0.8 mL equivalent per liter for more than 1.5 mL equivalent per liter it can cause toxicity and the higher the higher uh, blood level can be fatal to the patient so be cautious when you are giving lithium therapy in short the action of lithium and valproate is the lithium is acting through gsk3 which is glycogen synthase kinase 3 and uh, it is uh, uh, result into transcription regulation and gene expression of various aspects you know in uh, valproate it is histone deacetylase which uh, again uh, cause uh, transcription regulation and uh, further gene expression to treat the manic episode other than uh, valproate and uh, lithium the drug which can be used or evidenced by the clinical trial to can be used in uh, bipolar mania is typical antipsychotics like trifluperazine haloperidol and molybdenum these had good effect in mania but none effect on the depressive state in atypical antipsychotics like clozapine risperidone olanzapine quetiapine ziprazidone has a good effect on mania and uh, as you can see on the right side it has varied degree of uh, effect in the depression in which quetiapine has the highest role in treating the depression 
in atypical antipsychotics which are partial agonist like uh, aripiprazole has good effect in uh, antimanic property and uh, it, it, it can be also considered for depressive state also the mechanism is uh, by blocking the dopamine receptor by blocking the dopamine receptor it decreases the activity of dopamine in the uh, neurons hence the symptoms are alleviated now few point regarding treatment of acute mania so acute mania or hypomania usually is the easiest phase of uh, to be uh, can be treated in bipolar disorder because uh, the reduction of symptoms are uh, very uh, too much relieving for the patient and for the for their family members also and the drug agent can be used in alone or in the combination to bring the patient down from high a patient with severe mania are best treated in hospitalized uh, situation where the patient uh, may be highly aggressive and can harm to the others or uh, to themselves and the response can be achieved within the days or weeks in the treatment of acute bipolar uh, depression the relative usefulness of standard uh, antidepressant is uh, limited in bipolar illness uh, for the bipolar illness it is good to give the cover of mood stabilizer while if the patient is maintained on mood stabilizer for manic episode and switch into the depressive state one can consider to increase the dose of mood stabilizer first uh, rather than uh, opting for the uh, standard antidepressant a fixed combination of olanzapine and cloxstein is also uh, found to be very effective in treating bipolar depression and it also has a Uh, property that uh, it does not induce or assist to the mania or hypomania for maintenance treatment it is uh, important to note that uh, relapse prevention is very important factor in treating bipolar depression so regimen should be uh, should be selected to achieve its primary goal uh, to sustain euthymia and Uh, other factor can also be taken in consideration like uh, uh, interpersonal relationship and uh, the problems in the family via the behavioral management the other aspect is sedation cognitive impairment tremor weight gain and rashes are some side effects they may lead to non compliance this should be uh, taken into account and uh, should be treated immediately to make the patient compliant on the treatment now after the pharmacologic treatment there is a, 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 a basket of non pharmacological therapies also like uh, psychosocial therapies so psychosocial therapies basically have uh, uh, four, three type of short term uh, psychotherapies like cognitive therapy interpersonal therapy and uh, behavioral therapy it has been said said that if you treat the patient in a both way that has a good uh, pros- prognostic sign and outcome are more positive rather than treating with the alone therapy like uh, pharmacology either pharmacology or non pharmacological therapy so we will go through the cognitive and all the therapies in the short the cognitive therapy as we have learned that aaron back gave the cognitive theory of the uh, bipolar disorder so she also gave the cognitive therapy and it address to the cognitive distortions which we had discussed in the uh, cognitive theory interpersonal therapy is focused on the interpersonal problem uh, within the family particularly the in the spouses uh, either the the divorce or separation may lead to occurrence of disorder or the disorder may lead to the breakdown of the family so this uh, therapy is important in case of bipolar uh, disorder so this may lead to uh, the interpersonal problem may lead to precipitating and perpetuating factor this should be eliminated via interpersonal therapy behavior therapy is by addressing maladaptive behavior in the therapy patient learn to function in the world in such a way that they receive positive positive uh, reinforcement so behavior therapy is important psychoanalytically oriented therapy to uh, to the overall betterment of the patient and it is not simply to alleviate the symptoms this can be used family therapy can also be used uh, and uh, 
increasing evidence indicates that helping a patient with mood disorder to reduce and cope with the stress uh, is uh, helpful with the family therapy in the others we have uh, some uh, invasive and non invasive procedures which are employed in the treatment of bipolar disorder for example first one is uh, vagal nerve stimulation is uh, caused to alleviate the symptoms of major depressive disorder actually this vagal nerve stimulation was uh, is the uh, modality of treatment for uh, refractory seizure disorder or refractory epilepsy and is found helpful in major depressive disorder also pms is transcranial magnetic stimulation uh, shows promising result in depression and uh, mania also so this is not uh, this is the stimulation via the Uh, magnet high magnetic field rather than the electrical impulses which we used to use in the electroconvulsive therapies sleep deprivation can also be used to alleviate the symptoms and approximately 60% of the patient with uh, depressive disorder exhibit significant but transient benefit from the sleep deprivation phototherapy can be used in seasonal affective disorder in uh, seasonal affective disorder it has been seen that in the winters the episodes of depression are uh, uh, experienced more so the theory uh, the the speculation on the theory behind this is the duration of the daytime is shortened in the winter so the exposure to the sunlight is not uh, adequate uh, for the adequate period of time so the person is exposed to the th- around 10000 lux of light in the morning and for in the evening also for 1 to 2 hours so this therapy is for particular particular for seasonal pattern of the bipolarity now coming to the side effects of the drug which we have used in the treatment the common side effect of lithium is dizziness drowsiness tremors trouble walking dry mouth increased thirst urination uh, nausea vomiting loss of appetite rash or blurred vision so these are the common side effects of lithium lithium can have toxicity also if the levels are more than uh, 1.5 the person can have uh, as a mild toxicity fine tremors of the limb fog will rigidity gi disturbances polyuria polydipsia agitation confusion and delirium in severe toxicity in severe toxicity one can have coarse tremor and this may lead to this may lead to stupor clonus seizure QTC interval prolongation and may lead to renal failure respiratory complications may lead to coma and death so for the management of uh, lithium toxicity if it is between the 1.5 to 2.5 iv normal saline should be given to replace the lithium with the sodium oral oral sodium polystyrene sulfonate can also be tried hemodialysis if required it is not required uh, much in the case of mild toxicity for the toxicity in which the lithium level are more than 2.5 one can go for hemodialysis also along with the iv normal saline and oral sodium polystyrene sulfonate adverse effect of uh, other antimanic agents like carbamazepine can have nausea dizziness drowsiness dry mouth and constipation serious side effects can be worsening of depression suicidal thoughts severe dizziness swelling itching and trouble breathing in for lamotrigine one can have backache chest pain stomach cramps and inflammation of the nose serious side effects may be altered mental state or stevens johnson syndrome for valproate serious side effects may be drowsiness confusion easy bruising uh, unusual bleeding worsening of seizure flu like symptoms like chest pain bone marrow suppression or it can lead to fulminant hepatic failure for first generation antipsychotics the patient uh, can uh, develop muscle rigidity significant slowed movement involuntary muscle movements and contractions and tremors which is known as collectively known as extra pyramidal symptoms akathisia tardive dyskinesia in long term therapy neurolept malignant syndrome is a serious side effect this may prove fatal and uh, it is characterized by muscle rigidity high grade fever sweating and uh, autonomic instability uh, may lead to lethality 
for second generation antipsychotic the side effect profile is somewhat uh, uh, subtle than the uh, first generation one can have sedation dizziness weight gain sexual dysfunction cardiac effects hypotension dry mouth constipation and metabolic syndrome as side effects the third generation antipsychotic is more safer uh, one can have nausea vomiting headache insomnia constipation tremors as milder side effects only so now in the last in what condition one can uh, refer the patient to the specialist if you are working in a primary health care setup or you are uh, working as a general physician or uh, primary physician so what to know about when to patient when to refer the patient for special treatment so the patient uh, presenting with severe mania or severe depression should be treated by the specialist it is uh, a uh, uh, complex situation which should be dealt with the expertise present the depression which is deteriorating or refractory to the treatment the symptoms are worsening or the person is not responding to the treatment should be uh, referred or when the patient switch to the another episode of hypomania or mania patient present with hypomania and not responding to intervention as per their care plan so again the uh, patient is not responding to the treatment if the comorbid alcohol or drug misuse is suspected so comorbidity or dual diagnosis uh, should be treated by the specialist if a woman with bipolar affective disorder is pregnant or planning for a pregnancy or up to 12 months postpartum should be treated by the experts having ongoing symptoms despite good treatment adherence so patient is not responding or became treatment resistant should be uh, referred and treated in a specialist establishment so now thanks for the patient listening so we had learned about the mania hypomania the continuum uh, the spectrum of uh, depression what are the mixed event the etiology magnitude the drugs available the adverse effect of drugs the non pharmacological management we can have and other treatments like vagal nerve stimulation electroconvulsive therapies and all so thanks thanks to all for your listening